Good day, and thank you for joining us. I am Phyllis Everett, CEO of Saffron Trust, an organization that looks to bring uh, awareness and reduce the socioeconomic disparities in marginalized communities in Travis and Williamson County here. And we look to change the life outcomes for women that are part of our um, circle and in our community. Uh, today, I'm here with researcher, professor, and clinical nurse specialist, and author of The Struggle is Real, a phenomenal book, Dr. Lisa Sumlin. As one of Saffron Trust's esteemed networking partners, Dr. Sumlin specializes in communicating the realities of diabetes today, and we'll be discussing her extensive expertise in her new book as it relates to our communities. Dr. Sumlin, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. I've learned that you've done some amazing things in your work and in your tenure, and even in introdu introducing you here to the audience, I don't do you any justice because you have an extensive background, accolades in so many different things, and I would love for you to have the floor and just speak to the audience about all the things that you've accomplished and everything that you do and who you really are. Okay. All right. So I'd like to start with the fact that I, ha I am a wife with two beautiful little girls, uh, Jayla and Gabrielle. Okay. Um, I am a professor at UT and I teach both undergraduate as well as graduate level nurses. Okay. I'm a researcher and I also work as a clinical nurse specialist. At the clinic, I see the most complicated diabetic patients. Yes. Um, I also uh, am a, the chief health officer for C2H, Community Coalition for Health. That's also an organization, nonprofit, that goes into the community and help increase awareness and provide resources for diabetes management. Yes. And prevention. We're really trying to put a dent in that as well. Wow, that, that's good. Yes. So tell us, um, why diabetes? Why that, diabetes? That's such an uh, odd one, but something that really needs to be communicated. And we don't have enough women of color who's, you know, who talk about it. So why, why did you choose diabetes? When I first started in the nursing program, um, when we came across this, the topic of diabetes and looking at the disease process, it always intrigued me. Mm -hmm. And it intrigued me, I think, is because it affects every single part of your body. Mm. You know? And so I said, okay, there's something about this disease process. And then I kind of put it on the back burner for a little while. Once I graduated from nursing school and I worked on a med surge unit for about five years, if I were to have six or seven patients, at least five were going to have diabetes. Wow. And they were in for complications due to diabetes. And I was like, okay, obviously I need to know more. I need to do more because I can't keep sit back and watch this happen. I have to do more. Yes. And so um, after about five, five years or so, I went back and got my master's degree. And of course, this time I focused on diabetes. Mm. No more back burner for it. No more back burner. No, no. And so um, once I came out, I started practicing as a clinical nurse specialist. Okay. And what that is, is it's, it's very similar to a nurse practitioner, but we specialize. Mm. So it's just like you have general practitioner physicians, yes. and then you have your, your um, specialists. And so I specialize in diabetes management. Wow. And, and what made you want to empower women to know about diabetes? Well, in my research... Yeah, you um, became that voice. Yes, it was... I kept thinking, okay, how can we impact not only the current generations, but generations to come? Hmm. And so what I said was, okay, we have to target the women. You know, the women oh, are yeah. the, the gatekeepers in the home. Yes, we and, are. And, and so if they're doing a lot of the cooking, a lot of preparing of the food, if I can get the woman to change, mm. and then she can impact her family, and then we're also impacting the kids and future generations to come. Oh, that, that's good. So let's talk about your book. As I introduced before, The Struggle is Real. What is this book about? <laughs> wow, this book, I took the research that I did, um, my interactions with patients over the years, 
And I took a look at, so what, what is one of the biggest issues that they're having in order to manage their diabetes? And we always came back to food. Food, we we always come back to food. That food. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that doggone food. <laughs> and so this is an area that they really, really struggle with. And especially when you have cultures where a lot of the things that they do is focused on food. Yes. You know, we go to a birthday party. It's the food we're concerned about. We go to any type of party. And we're always focused on the food. You go to a funeral, we focus on Oh, yeah, food. right. <laughs> I had a bad day at work. We're focused focus on, on food. food. <laughs> and so um, I was like, okay, it's not something that we can take away from anyone. So we can't say, okay, you have diabetes now. You can no longer participate in family events. You, you know, you go, you don't eat. Who's going to live like that? I know. That's a very difficult way to live. Food is like such a... Oh, that's one that everybody struggles with. The struggle is real. <laughs> it's real. It's so real. And so what I decided was, okay, how can I help people manage their diabetes better, per, even prevent diabetes, by showing them how to put food on their plate so that it's not impacting their health so much, hmm. not pushing up those um, blood sugars, not that pushing up those blood good. pressures. How can we do that? And so in the book, what I did is I put in... Um, ways to eat at social gatherings, ways to eat at birthday parties, so that you're not... Yeah, I read some of those. Not impacting in fact, your health so much, but you're still enjoying your cultural foods. Good. And, and who, who did you write the book for? My focus is women. Yeah. It, it was women, and again, if we can get the women to change, they can change the household, and we're impacting generations to come. Because mm. if you haven't heard... Type 2 diabetes is not impacting our kids. Yeah. And that never used to be, that was never the case. Type 2 diabetes in a child? You that, never heard of that? No, it was always type 1 because it was due to mm -hmm. an illness, something happened to their pancreas where they no longer made insulin. Type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle issue. No. Ah. So I said, we have, to, we have to make an impact. And so I said, okay, let's focus on the women. Not that anybody can pick up this book but, and get tips out of it. Ah, uh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so I have to ask, why did you focus on cultural foods? Cultural foods is because that was something that people always, when they came to me, it was, okay, all I can eat is, you know, let's say chicken and vegetables. And they couldn't understand how they were supposed to live the rest of their life like that. Mm. And so we got to remember that when it comes to um, cultures that really are food focused, it's a part of their identity. Yeah, that's true. And so we can't say, okay, no, well, let's do away with that. It still has to be a part of them. It's, mm. it's who they are. Mm. And so, you know, I've been dying to ask you this. Okay. <laughs> and I think, I believe it was page 130 in your book. Okay. I, I have to ask you, is this one really real? Okay. Trying to eat less at the dining table wearing those skinny jeans. Is that a myth? Is that true? What is that about? Does it really, really work? <laughs> it really, truly works. Because I know the women want to know. I'm not yes. just asking for myself, but I show all the women out there want to know. It yes, does. It, it actually works. Because what happens is when you have on those skinny jeans and you're eating, as you get to your being full, what happens is the pressure from the jeans actually push pressure on your stomach. Yes. So that the food is actually pushing up and you feel fuller. Ah. Oh. And so you have to start pushing the plate away, even though your brain is saying, no, I'm still hungry. Yes. And you want to eat more. But the those jeans, jeans are like yes. tight, 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 yes. tight. Yes. Wow, wow, so wow. it's either, okay, let me push away the plate or let me go take off these jeans. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to know that one because I do have some skinny jeans at my home and I'm going to go home and I think I'm going to try those on Fridays and Saturdays because that's when I eat out the most yes. and I really want to continue to eat. <laughs> okay. Oh, Dr. Lisa, thank you so much. And I, I do have one last final question. Okay. How, uh, how can the women of Saffron Trust benefit from your expertise? After watching this interview, what action steps would they take? What could you share when it comes to your expertise for the women of uh, who are part of the network of Saffron Trust or women who will see this, the struggle is real and cultural foods. First, buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's right. And just know that when you're doing the tips in the book, to not try to make changes all at once. 
Because what I found in practice is when people, they get this mindset and they're all geared up to make all of these changes because life is going to be great now. They do all the changes at one time and they don't stick to it. Okay. It's very, very difficult. They tend to slide back into their old ways and then they can't get out of it. But if you make baby steps, baby steps in making changes to the food you're currently eating so that it's healthier and how to put the things on your plate better, eventually those changes stick. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for sitting with Saffron Trust. We really, we really value you and your expertise, you. and we're so glad thank to have you a part of us. Um, for those of you who are interested to see more of Dr. Lisa Sumlin, she'll be involved in the uh, shopping, yes. food shopping expo that we're putting together at Saffron Trust. And Dr. Lisa will be going through the supermarkets with us, teaching us not only how to buy food, but what ingredients are good to put in food. She'll be looking at those cans and telling us the sodium and salt level. So you really will benefit from her. So tune into the Saffron Trust social media site and Dr. Lisa's website to hear more about our shopping adventure with Dr. Lisa that's up and coming. We thank you so much for, for joining us and have a great and wonderful day.